I'm John McChesney. I'm the director of Rocket Science. Here at Rocket Science, we try to create an atmosphere where children can make discoveries on their own. So we do very little in the way of telling them what's going to happen, because we want them to find out what's going to happen. And in this way, we also tell them stories. The stories present a problem for them to solve. We try to make the stories as crazy as possible so that they'll remember them. In this case, we always use Jack and Jill. Jill has the infinitely long hair. They're the good guys. And our bad guy is the evil Mr. Fred. Evil Mr. Fred is always trying to trap Jill, Jack and Jill in some situation, and Jack and Jill have to find their way out of it. Of course, the kids get to do experiments that will solve the problem in this story. Once upon a time, evil Mr. Fred was traveling far, far out at sea. It seems that he had been experimenting late one night and accidentally turned his mustache into a very sensitive antenna. And in the city areas, he picked up all the TV shows, the radio shows, everything under the sun, came in on his mustache and into his head. And it was driving him crazy. So he took off in his pirate ship to see if he could find a place where he could have peace of mind and at least go out and try and get some treasure from other people. In the meantime, Jack and Jill had learned from their grandma that their great, 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 great grandpa Jack was the one who had planted the beanstalk and went and got all the riches from the giant. And he had stored all those riches at Beanstalk Island, but nobody ever knew where Beanstalk Island was. And Jack and Jill had taken off in their handy dandy rowboat to try and find Beanstalk Island. And by chance, as they were out at sea, they saw a huge bank of fog. And under all that fog, they saw some green. The green was beanstalks growing out of something, green everywhere. And they looked, and here was an island hidden in the fog. It's no wonder nobody ever found it. And who would have guessed that at that very moment, evil Mr. Fred arrived at the very same spot. And he saw Jack and Jill out there. And he also saw through the fog, Beanstalk Island. Everybody knew that that was the island of the riches. And evil Mr. Fred said, yes, we found it, the famous island with all the treasure. But Jack and Jill are there. I've got to get rid of them. So evil Mr. Fred had his minions load up all the cannons and start shooting at Jack and Jill. They were trying to sink Jack and Jill's robot. And Jack and Jill saw this. They said, whoa, even if they are a bad shot, sooner or later, they're going to hit our rowboat, and that'll be the end of us. So Jack and Jill dove into the water and started swimming for their lives. As soon as they entered, they looked down, and what did they see? A sign under the water that says treasure with an arrow. And the arrow pointed right at the opening of a cave underwater. So Jack and Jill swam down into the cave. They only had to go a little ways when they popped up under the island in this hidden chamber. We'll just draw the whole chamber here like this. And the chamber had water in it. Looked like a small lake there. And when Jack and Jill popped up, they got their breath of air back. In the middle of the lake, they saw a pot, like one would grow plants in, with a little bit of ground around it. And the pot also had a sign. And the sign said, water me. There wasn't very much light in this room. But Jack and Joe saw that around the edges of the lake that was in there, there were torches, but they weren't lit. Like that. And so they pulled some matches out of their pockets that were in watertight containers, and they lit one of those torches. 
and they looked at this pot, and they said, hmm, I bet you our great, 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 great grandpa put this here. I wonder what this is all about. And as they were doing this, they noticed that the water level had come up a little bit. Let's put them there, standing on this island. The water was now up around their ankles, whereas before, it was below the surface of the thing they were standing on. Jill's hair came all the way up. And evil Mr. Fred was on the outside. He also wanted to find that treasure. He figured he'd just gotten rid of Jack and Jill because they dove overboard and he never saw them again. So evil Mr. Fred got into his rowboat, rowed over to the island with some of his minions, parked the rowboat, and started running around looking for treasure. And all he found was bean plants. When he got near the top, he found a big X drawn on the ground. He says, ha ha, this must be the place where the treasure is hidden. So evil Mr. Fred had his minions start digging there and they dug and they dug and they dug. While directly beneath them was Jack and Jill in the cabin trying to figure out how to get water to go into the plant to see what would happen. If you were Jack and Jill, what would you do to get water up into the plant? do some experiments and we can find out how Jack and Jill are going to solve this problem. We're going to be doing an experiment where we burn a candle in a jar. The jar will be upside down, sitting in a puddle of water. The candle will be right inside it like this. As a candle burns, some Textbooks say that the candle uses up the oxygen that's in the jar and then the water goes up to take the place of the oxygen. Now the oxygen that's all around us is only about one part in five of the atmosphere. So if the water goes up about one-fifth the way, then we'd say, yep, that's probably right. If the water goes up higher, that's a problem. We'd have to figure out why it went up higher than there is oxygen in the air. To do this experiment, we need to get some candles under there and the jar sitting in water. Fortunately, this is very easy to do with things that you can find around your house or at the local grocery store. All you need is a one quart canning jar, some clay, and some birthday candles. We usually buy birthday candles in big boxes, but you can get any variety of them. We're going to form the clay into a circle. How about that big? Just so it fits into the jar. And we're going to put some candles into the clay. Uh, we'll just start with one candle like that. And we would like the candle to be sitting in a fairly deep tub of water. You can use a baking pan of any sort as long as it'll hold enough water to fill this jar up almost full. Uh, we would like it to sit above the bottom of the pan, so we're going to rest it on another piece of clay. We'll just stick it in this pan, kind of squish it down a little bit so it doesn't tip over too easy. And we'll put our candle on top of that so it looks pretty good. And that's the setup we're going to use. And in a minute we'll fill this with water, light the candle, and put the jar over it. Now we just put a little food coloring in this water so it's easier for you to see. We'll light our birthday candle. We want it to burn a little bit before we put our jar on so that it's got a nice flame going. Now when we put the jar on if you put the jar over here and press down, no bubbles. If I come in at an angle, we can make a bubble if we tilt it. 
point. Now we're going to put it on the candle and see if it acts the same way. Okay, no bubbles. And we'll let it burn. So far, it doesn't look like much of anything's happened. Just have a happy candle inside of a jar. Oh, the flame is going out. It used up its oxygen. And now, I don't know if you can see through the water level, but there's a tiny bit of water has come up inside of this jar. Not very much though, a very small amount. So as far as an experiment is concerned, we'd say, well, it used up the oxygen, but the water didn't come up one fifth the way. So something else might be going on. I'm going to wave your jar around a little bit to get more air inside. And we'll light those guys. Do you think it's going to go higher with two or the same amount? There we go. Now I can see the water in there is right about at that level. If I put my finger on the surface, you can see it better. So the water in the jar is up here. Hmm, two candles made it go up higher. Looked pretty much to me like it went twice as high with two. And always have something safe at hand like this whole pan of water in case something goes bad. Now we have four candles. Looked pretty much to me like it went twice as high with two. Almost no bubbles. Boy, those sure went out a lot faster. Now look at the level of the water. It's gone up to about there very quickly and the surface of the water is down right there at the tip of my finger. So it's about an inch and a half above the surface and it's completely over the top of that clay. Now, let's do eight candles. There we go, eight candles. Wave our jar around a little bit, make sure we got fresh air inside. Here we go. Wow, those went out fast. So the water is up right to there. Surface is down here. That looks like the jar is almost half full. There's more than one fifth without any question. And you can tell that the more candles we get, the higher it goes. There we go. 75 candles. You may not want to try this at home. It smokes up the house quite a bit. And you have to be kind of careful when you're putting the jar over the top. Ready, get set, go. Whoa. Look at all the bubbles that time. Now ah, you can see water is slowly going up. And up. And up. So far it's right about there. It's still going. 
Somehow, that candle has made almost all the atmosphere in that jar disappear. Now, this is something that we want to try and figure out. So, in the rest of the experiments, we'll take a look at this to see if we can find out why that water went so high. Uh, all you need for this experiment are some kitchen tongs, a hard-boiled egg with the shell removed, you can draw a face on it if you like, a match, a piece of paper, a jar that the egg almost fits into. Uh, the only ones I found at the grocery store are jars that they sell juice in, and a hair dryer. Okay, the air around this gets hot and it gets cold. When it gets hot, it spreads out further, it expands and tends to rise. When it gets cold, it shrinks down and tends to fall down below. That's usually what helps make our winds go. Now, we have an experiment here. We want to make some air expand or contract to help us out. In this case, we have our friend here, Humpty. Humpty is tired of sitting on top of his wall. He wants to go live inside of a jar. But the only jar he could afford had a door that was too small and poor Humpty couldn't get inside. If you were Humpty, how would you get yourself into the jar? That's what we're gonna find out. If we consider that if we put a piece of paper in the jar that's on fire, and that then set Humpty on top of the door, What'll happen? Hmm, interesting. The paper is going to burn up the oxygen in the jar. It's going to heat up the air. The air is going to expand. Humpty might not like this because he's going to be sitting on fire. He may dance a little bit. But then the air should cool off and we'll find out what's going to happen to Humpty. I'm going to use these tongs. I'm going to light the paper on fire, push it down into the jar and then set Humpty on the top of the jar quickly, and we'll see what happens to Humpty. So we'll light our paper on fire. Got Humpty with one hand, and push our paper in, put Humpty on top. Look at Humpty, he's bouncing. Our paper is still burning. Thunk! <laughs> Humpty's in the jar. And he may or may not be a happy Humpty, but at least he's in there minding his own business. He thinks he's a hermit egg. Now, the paper burned, just like we had a burning candle in another case, and Humpty got sucked inside. When hot air cools, it creates suction, and that's what sucked Humpty down into the jar. You can try this yourself at home as long as your parents are there to help you with the burning stuff, and you should always have some water nearby in case something goes wrong. Now, let's suppose Humpty is dissatisfied. He's in his house, but he doesn't like it in there, and he wants to get back out. How can Humpty get back out of his jar? Well, <laughs> we could turn him upside down and see if he'll fall out. But no, Humpty is too big. He's quite a lot bigger than that hole. First off, it's all kind of messy in there because he's got that burned piece of paper in with him. So we should put in a little water and wash Humpty off. See if we can get some of that paper out of there. There it is, and get Humpty all clean. There we go, got a clean Humpty. Now, Humpty wants to leave, but he's stuck in the door. He can't get out of his house. You can see his face there. Now we'll use our hairdryer and heat up Humpty's house.
So Humpty survived. He fell out of his house, landed on his feet, and he's happy again. So now we can see that hot air can get him to go inside because when we lit the fire, the air got hot, Humpty bounced up and down, a lot of the hot air escaped. As the air cooled, it sucked down Humpty, Humpty Dumpty, back inside the jar. Then when we wanted to get Humpty back out, we cooled off the jar in the water, got all of the ashes off of him so he'd make a nice seal on the lip, and warmed up the jar so the air expanded and pushed Humpty back out again. surrounded by a whole bunch of air. The air is mostly nitrogen, there's some oxygen in there, a little bit of argon, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of carbon dioxide, and a tiny bit of water vapor. And we want to take almost all of that out of this can in a very simple way and see what happens to the can. We'd like to take all the air out with steam, which luckily is very easy to do. But what's not so easy to do is make the steam disappear instantly. And I'll show you a way that you can make the steam get a thousand times smaller in a very, very small part of a second. All you need is some kitchen tongs, your empty soda can with a top popped open, some tape of any sort. We're just going to use some masking tape and something to measure out a little bit of water like a cup. So if you try to hold a can with the tongs yourself, they could probably slip off. So we're just going to tape it on there so that it's not so likely to slip off. If you have duct tape, masking tape, I don't know if scotch tape works that great. It uh, tends to fall off under water. And we're going to just get it on there so it's more likely to stay. There. Can on tongs. We'll put some water inside. The amount of water that you put in isn't critical. About that much shall do. Then you want to heat it up. If you have a gas stove at home, it's real easy. Electric stove will work too. You just want to have the can against the stove when you're cooking it. For this guy, we'll just hold it over our stove. We want to get it hot enough so that the water is boiling and there's lots of steam coming out. When it starts to steam, then we know that the steam is pushing out all of the nitrogen and the oxygen and the argon and the carbon dioxide. So the only thing that will be left in the can, pretty much, is steam, water vapor. For that amount of water, it'll probably take about a minute for it to get hot enough to go. Now they can see that there's a little bit of steam coming up. We want to make sure that there's lots of steam coming up. Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, that worked. Oh, glug, 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 glug. the can crushed itself. Why did it do that? You can see that it is a mere shadow of its former self. Uh, when you take steam and let it turn back into water, it gets a thousand times smaller. When we had this end under the water, that steam turned back into water so quickly that it created a vacuum inside. And all the pressure that's around us crushed the can for us. This is related to our candles in our jar too. Because whenever you burn a candle, it makes two things. Thing number one is carbon dioxide. Thing number two is water vapor and heat. But the carbon dioxide and the water vapor are the things that we're interested in. This can was filled 
with pure water vapor, and you can see that it created some suction and destroyed the can. Okay, you remember that when you had the candles under the jar, as the flame went up, the water started to go higher and higher in the jar. Jack and Jill started to realize the same thing. When they lit one torch, the water started going up and up and up. So they quickly lit every torch in the whole place. And the water level went higher and higher and higher. And once the water level got up to the top of the pot, Jack and Joe were swimming in it, looking around, saying, what's going to happen now? And then it overflowed into the dirt, and immediately something started to grow out of the dirt. And Jack and Joe said, it's the beanstalk! And this enormous beanstalk just blew out of this pot, 20 feet wide, straight up into the air, hit the ceiling at about 200 miles an hour with such force that it burst the whole top of the island off. There was a huge exploding sound, rocks and debris and beanstalks from the top were going everywhere. Do you remember who was up here? Poor evil Mr. Fred and his minions were up here trying to dig for treasure. And when that beanstalk hit the ceiling, evil Mr. Fred and his minions went flying, ah, sploosh, clear over the horizon. And Jack and Jill got carried away on the beanstalk itself. The leaves sprouted out and picked them up and carried them high into the sky. And then the beanstalk grew out other branches here and there, and it became heavier and heavier. And as it grew, leaves formed. And after the leaves formed, then the beans formed, the bean pods. But they weren't green. These bean pods were gold. And inside was gold coins and silver coins and rubies and pearls, all kinds of valuable stuff. And Jack and Jill, now, as the beanstalk kept growing and tilted over, it ended up tilting right over where evil Mr. Fred's pirate ship was. Of course, he and his minions were gone. So Jack and Jill harvested all the gold, put it on evil Mr. Fred's pirate ship, and they took down his Jolly Roger flag and put up a flag of their own and headed off back home again. And everybody lived happily ever after, except evil Mr. Fred. So we saw Jack and Joe were able to get the water into the pot and escape from the island. You've done three experiments so far. In the first one, we had candles in a jar, just like Jack and Jill inside of their cave. The candles burned up the oxygen and produced carbon dioxide and water vapor. The water vapor condensed rapidly and the hot air cooled off and sucked the water upwards inside of your jar. In the second one, you had an egg in a jar with flame under it. In this case, the flame burned and produced some hot air and gases which made the egg dance around and bounce on the top for a couple of seconds. And then as the flame died out, the egg settled down and sealed off the top. And then kaboom, the egg got sucked inside as both the water vapor and the hot air shrunk down. In the third one, we had a soda can that you heated up on the stove until steam was pouring out. And then when you turned it upside down and just touched the tip of it underwater, all that steam condensed so fast that the can just went bang and crushed itself by the air pressure that was all around it. So in these experiments, you've learned a little bit about hot air, flames, and vacuum. So you can look on the internet and find out other experiments like this, and we hope you've all had a good time.